Hey everyone, today we're going to see what measurement tools are available on Adis.cloud, how to use them, how to place them down, and how to manage them. First, we'll start off by just opening the measures menu. You'll find it at the top right here. Just click on it and you'll see all of the available measurement tools and we'll go over each of them one by one. The first one is a simple distance measurement tool. So basically, you're just going to click on it. It's going to open the menu on the right and you'll see your distance. Then you can click anywhere in the viewer to drop your first point, click anywhere else to drop a second point, and then you can click as many times as you want to drop as many points as you want. Then at some point, you can do a right click and they'll stop the measurement at the last point you drop. You can move a measurement point by clicking on it and dragging it around. Release to let go of the dot in its current position. Here you can see the distance between each point. So here I have 2.23 meters between that point and that point. And I can also see the overall distance using the menu on the right here. When I click on it, I can see the total distance here I have 7.34 meter. That's the addition of every single distance. You'll see that you can add midpoints if you want to. So for example, if I want to add a point here in the middle between that one and that one, I can just click on the plus that's right here, plus, and I'll add a point in the middle. So now I have 1.11 on one side and 1.11 on the other. I can just take that point and drag it around and move it as much as I want. And I can add a new point by just going to plus and adding a new one here. And I have a new square. I have two new points and I can do that as many times as I want. And I can also remove points if I want to. So we could just go here, click on little trash and say trash that one trash that one too and i'm back to my 2.23 meter and my two original dots you'll also see that here you have position indicators so you have minus 7 minus 2 and minus 0.029 that's just the position of the point in the project you can copy that position by just clicking on the little clipboard right here here at the top you'll find some actions so if you go on there you'll find a new tab here on the distance i can create a profile link down below in the description to learn more about the profile tool and you can see a video and an article out there i'm not i'm not going to go too deep into that uh, but you can create a profile out of a distance and you can also duplicate that distance if you want to tweak it just a little bit and have two versions of the same one for example finally this is where you can delete it you just click delete and the distance is going to go away we just saw how to add a measurement and how to manage it in the right menu now you'll also see that in the v4 you can move around while adding a measurement to do that, simply hold the space bar and then you can use your left and right click to move around. You can also double click to go anywhere and just move around to get where you need to go. For example, if I wanted to drop my measurement here, I can move around and just go there. Then I'll release the space bar and you'll see when I move that the measurement has not been dropped and so I can now drop it here. Now if I want the next one to be behind me, again, I'll press space bar, turn around using my mouse and then go out there for example release spacebar and drop my measurement as before right click to finish and i am now done with my measurement the second tool is the delta tool it will allow you to drop two points so for example i'll drop one on the top here and then i'll just move around there and drop the second one at the bottom right here i'll try to be a bit precise there we go okay what that'll give me is first the most important and what that tool is most used for the height so it'll give me the height difference between the highest point and the lowest point here i have 2.57 meters so that's basically the height of that structure and in that case i also have the x difference and the y difference so i have the width and the length of the structure so 4.17 meters for the x and then 2.28 meters for the y i also have the real distance between the two points but in that case that doesn't do too much for me the next one I want to show you is the ground distance measurement. Basically, let's assume I want to have the length of that corridor from the wall out there to the wall that's here. But I do have a problem. I have this that is pretty much in the way. So I, I cannot drop a point to have a distance here at the bottom because, well, that there's that in the way. And so I wouldn't have a wall to wall distance. So what I can do is get out there. Select my ground distance, click the first one, and then I'll get back out there and I'll drop my second point up there on the wall. Right click to stop it. And here you can see an actual ground distance. So it's 14.5 meters. To show you an example, let's go back out there and drop a regular distance in the same spot. Now I'm going to do the same thing and get out there and I'll drop a regular distance up there as well. 
right click to stop it, and we'll see the difference between the two of those. You can see here the ground distance, as it doesn't take into account the z-axis, is 14.5 meters, as we said, and the other one is 14.65. As it is tilted, it is obviously a little bit longer, and so if you want to be precise, the ground distance is the way to go when you're trying to get only horizontal distances. The next tool is going to be pretty easy to show you, it's just a simple point taking measurement. So I'll just go here, click on the dot and drop it anywhere I want. So here I'll just drop it on the clock and that'll give me the position of that specific point I selected. So here is minus 7, minus 0, and then 1. My project here is not georeferenced, so I have a distance according to the original position of the project. Now, if my project was georeferenced, I would have a high number, because obviously it's georeferenced, I would have my x, y, z according to that georeferencement. The next tool is the angle measurement tool, so that one will allow you to drop three points. So here, for example, I'll drop one here, second one here, and then a third one here. And then I'll just move them to try to be perfectly aligned with the post right here and try to see if that whole support is bent or if it's sitting perfectly upright. So here I've placed it correctly and you can see it's almost perfect. We have a 90.27 degrees, which is almost perfect. It's just bent a little bit backwards, but that's, that's definitely okay in that case. Then we have the circles that is basically going to allow you to drop down three points as well. So I'll just go one, two, three. That just dropped down a circle. So now I have the radius of that circle right here, 0 0.29 meters. I can also find it right here. I also have the circumference and the position of the center. So that's the color dot right here in the middle. As for all the others, I can move it and tweak it just a little bit if I want to be perfectly on the edges of the barrel and not on the inside as I am right now. There, that seems way better. The two next measurements are pretty similar in the same way that the distance and ground distance were similar. The first one is going to be the area measurement tool, allowing you to get a floor surface. The second one is going to be a plan area, allowing you to get surface that might not be ground distance, that might be tilted. So for example, tilted roofs or walls. Before showing you the first one, I'm just going to go right here into the display settings and switch to orthographic mode, just like that, and I'll get myself on the top. What they'll allow me to do is when I drop down the surface area, be sure that I'm exactly where I need to be on the edges right here. So I'll just switch back, select the area, and then I'll zoom in. Again, I can use uh, the space bar, don't forget about this. Place it as perfectly as I can right here, move out there, and place them all. Right, so now I have dropped them all, and some edges I had to drop two points just to make sure that I was perfectly aligned with each wall. So I just did that, and now I have the whole area, which is 150 square meters. Now if I tilt down, you'll see that the dots are not all at the same height. Now that doesn't matter because that measurement doesn't take into account the Z as well, so it's just going to be the horizontal area represented by these dots. So the fact that one is up there and one is down there and one is in the middle doesn't matter. I've actually switched back to perspective mode right here before heading to the next one. For the next one, I'll just try to measure the surface of this wall right here. So what I'll do is first, I'll select that one and drop my three first points on the wall. I'll just do that. I'll drop a fourth point just because I know that it's a rectangular wall, so I'll only need four points. Now you can see when I move around, I have my red surface that's right here. My dots are going to stay on that red surface. So that means that even here I have a little door and I want to go behind it. It doesn't matter because now my dots are always going to be on that red surface. So I can go basically into the void. So I'll just drop one here. Then that one will have to be dropped all the way up there. So now even if I had this in front of me and everything, it would have not been really practical with a regular measurement, but right here with that surface measurement, I know that I'm always going to be sticking on that wall. And so now I know that it's 24.7 square meters. And for the final measurement, we have the volume. So I'll just click on there and I'll drop a shape like this. It is basically the same thing as a clipping box or an export zone. You'll see that in other articles and other videos. The way it works is once it's dropped, you can move it around by using these three lines right here. You can change its size and shape by using the dots right here and then I can rotate it using these circles right here. Now what I want to do is measure the volume of that area and that area together. So what I'll do is I'll just click here, go into actions and reset the orientation because that 
that was actually perfect from the beginning. I'll then use my red dot to put it all the way to the edge and do the same thing with the green one right here. Okay, so you can see that here I've dropped my first box. I'm just gonna press escape so I don't move it. I have my volume right here. It's 400 nearly 15 cubic meters. Now I'm still missing that part right here. So what I'll do is just take this, actions, duplicate it, and then I'll move the new one out there and change the shape and the size of the new one so it fits the part that is missing right here. And now if I just add the value of these two together, I'll have the total volume of that room. Right, finally, we have seen every single measurement tool, but there is one last thing I want to show you, and that is you are able to change the measurement unit. Right now, you've seen everything in meters from the beginning, but if you actually go right here in the settings and make sure you're in the general tab, right here, you'll find unit of measurement and then you can decide if you want to be in meters millimeters feet inches miles or yards for example i'll go feet close this you'll see that everything has changed to feet and also if i add a new one right now let's say i want to add a new distance i'll just drop down two random points it's directly in feet so that'll take into account every measurement that was dropped before and they'll also take into account every new measurement that you drop down and if i go back there i can just click on it and say now I want millimeters click on that get out and you have now everything in millimeters it's as quick and as easy as that.